Welcome back. This series of videos is all about my personal experience inside the Milan Art Institute Art Mastery Programme. So if you're interested in this particular course and what it's like from the perspective of being a new student like me, then stick with me. Uh, in my previous video, I ran through why you might want to invest in it, what's included, and what enticed me to sign up, including the costs and all of that information. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the first month actually inside the course. I'm gonna run through my experience of each exercise, how I found it as a learning tool, and whether or not I've, how much I've learned from it, and if I still think the course is worth the money. And at the end of this video, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about I've been watching other artists on YouTube talk about their experience of the course um, and what I think about that. So if you want to hear about my, um, my views on that, then please stick to the end. Okay, so the course starts with section one, which is an introduction into the oil and drawing materials that you're going to use. Uh, also, how the assignments are going to work, how to manage your time, how to set up your studio, how to set up the easel, which I explained in my previous video. Um, I'll add the link to that video in the description below. Um, so section two introduces us to line and shading. So we do a few exercises with pencil, and charcoal and we learned about measuring and scale and angles and alongside our drawing exercises we then started an oil painting where we chose a reference photo from the ones that they provide for you and we learned a technique called subtractive glaze painting which is where you cover the canvas with a really dark oil paint and solvent first and then you pull out light shade and shapes using subtractive tools so I've never worked this way before, so I found it really tricky. I didn't feel it was very intu intuitive to work this way. Um, and I cocked up the first one because, <laughs> with the solvents, because it dried out before I could subtract. So, and then it dried and I was like, right, what now? <laughs> I couldn't use any of it. So I had to start again and change my solvent ratio, but it's fine. So this is my first in-depth experience with color glazing and oils and using a proportional divider. So there were a lot of new skills that I learned and the trickiest part I found of this was getting my head around the transparent colors versus the opaque colors and then using them simultaneously with warm and cool colors, that is a lot. Using all the right colors in the right place is definitely a learned skill and um, something that I think just comes with time and practice. It's gonna need a lot, I think, for me. I think it's still a pretty dark painting and could definitely do with some lighter areas, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, bearing in mind everything that I had to learn in that section. So in the next section, we again worked on several pieces at a time. So we work on, we practiced more tone and shading with charcoal and pencil, and we started a second oil painting focusing on indirect painting. It's like the opposite of the previous technique. So instead of doing all the darks first and then layering up to lights, we did all the transparent lights first and then layered up the darks and opaques. Um, so in this section, we learned about uh, mixing colors as well. Um, and this is where I went a bit off piste. So I felt in my bones that doing just one painting as we were learning just wasn't enough. And uh, so I painted another one. So I decided to do two uh, from another one of the references that they supplied. I'm not a I'm not a landscape painter, so although it didn't light a fire in me, I really felt that doing it twice benefited my old brain because I am older than a lot of people. In the next section, we focused on more light shade, uh, light shade with charcoal, this time with a still life. Um, because we were using a looser approach with the charcoal, it was a bit more relaxed and less pressured, I think, than with the oils. Um, there was less to think about. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that one, really enjoyed that one. But my absolute favorite section so far, by far, was a monster portrait painting. It's called Monster Portrait not because of your sitter, because that would be rude, but because you paint in a very loose manner and it does look a little bit like a monster until you get you know, far away down the process and then you start adding all the fine details. So I loved it. This was a real breakthrough and extraordinary process for me personally. I think that painting portraits is utterly, utterly magical. 
So I took a photo of my daughter for the sauce and, um, and we went through so much learning in terms of colour and skin tones that I diverted from the course for three or four days just so that I could paint skin swatches so I could get used to mixing colour tones and it was bliss. I can't tell you how much in the zone I was um, during this section, I just loved it. In fact, I love this section so much that I decided to, before I even started, I decided to do two monster portraits because I wanted to, I wanted to learn the first way by watching and following the tutorial and then, um, and then try it again without having to watch step by step, just, just going through it. So I was planning uh, on painting this, uh, this one tomorrow, oh well, yesterday, um, but it was still drying and you can see my my mix is way, way too loose, too much linseed oil I think, not enough paint, too much linseed oil, so it's not dried and um, all the paint is breaking up, so I could see it happening, so I decided to do another one, and I just changed up the ratio of paint so I used a lot more paint um, and less medium less gamsol and linseed oil so the colors have uh, the colors have stayed a bit stronger so now I just have to wait for both of them to dry they are tacky now nearly dry so hopefully it means I can have a go at, at at least one of them uh, tomorrow morning fingers crossed yeah I wanted to repeat it also, using a slightly different re reference photo, I wanted to soften her expression and then I wanted to add imaginary flowers and a floral composition because um, I was beginning to re understand how important composition is so I decided to just tweak everything. So I created the composition very loosely in Photoshop and then I just went for it, learning what I had learned the first time, learning, you know, going through what I had learned the first time around. Um, and now I'm thinking, and I love this second painting so much, I'm thinking that when it comes to portfolio week, I might want to use this as my jumping board. Um, yeah, it, I just absolutely, absolutely loved it. Uh, okay, so around this time, I really injured my back, and in fact I did it twice, which completely threw me off schedule and took me out of the studio and it's taken me a really really long time to get back into the swing of things um, so that was really frustrating but I'm now finding my way back into the studio and I can you know pick up I've got one exercise still to do which is another still life and then I can move on to the next section so after all of these exercises do I think it's worth the financial investment so far yes totally I would never have learned all the skills that I've learned without all of these without all of these exercises. Um, Ellie is a fantastic teacher, the videos are easy to follow, and there's lots of support inside the platform in case you need it. You can follow other artists and they can follow you, um, and, and it's really helpful to get feedback on your work, which you can do inside the course as well. Okay, changing the subject now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the other artists that I see on YouTube talking about their own experience of being inside the course. It is really, really helpful to be able to watch other artists do the same thing you're doing because it's so easy to feel insecure about your own work. It's so easy to feel like you're not doing enough or you're not painting enough. Um, so it's fantastic to see other artists sharing their own ups and downs of their own journey. Uh, like nothing in life is easy. I don't think that there's any easy routes to becoming an accomplished or successful artist. You just have to keep going and never give up. That is it. And show up as well. If you can show up and share your experience, show your face, show your art, then do it. Support wherever you can. Uh, even if it feels uncomfortable and you hate being on camera, um, do it anyway. Sod it, just do it anyway. Um, so yeah, I love watching other artists who are further down the Milan art experience than I am. It helps me to get perspective, it helps me to know that I'm not alone when I'm struggling. Um, and I have a lot more to say about this course as I'm going through it, especially about expectations and pressure. So if you want me to talk about that more in my next video, then please comment below. And finally, I've been watching the Outstanding Artists, the series that's been running on YouTube recently, where 13 artists who've already completed the course are competing for $25,000, I think it is. Um, I've got a lot to say about this series, so 
I'm not going to put it in here because it'll make it too long, but if you want me to talk about that in the next video, then leave me a comment. Okay, that's it for now. I will come back to you when I've completed the next section, and until then, just keep going. See ya!